children, turn to page two, where you will find Dr. O'Connell's notes on teeth cleaning. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up. Now you can listen and brush your teeth at the same. Come on, you too, Miss. You can do it. Down and down and down. Up, up, up and down and down. Up, up and up. Now, not everyone has to have cavities. By eating candy, we encourage bacteria to attack our teeth. This is an ancient Hebrew. Did he have any cavities? No, he didn't. This ancient Hebrew had perfect teeth. Now, why is that, hmm? Because he didn't eat a lot of sweets. Why didn't ancient Hebrews have cavities? Everybody answer. Because, because they didn't, they didn't eat, eat a lot, lot of sweets. Of Good, again. Because, because they didn't, they didn't eat, eat a lot, lot of sweets. sweets. Good, summary. <laughs> Do you want cavities? No! No! Will you use your toothbrush? Yes! yes! <laughs> well then. Happy teeth. <laughs> Yesterday, so don't get out in those bikinis. Stay out of the water today. A little windy, temperature rising to well above freezing, and uh, we're expecting a little rain perhaps later on. Snow on the higher ground was frost last night, and uh, if you had any of those vegetables uncovered, you'll know about that too. Well, what have we got? Hey, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Was it an accident? It was an accident, you know. You're not from around here, are you? No, I'm Irish. But I've come from New Jersey, United States. Can you help me? Difficult. Very difficult. I have money. Look, mister, I don't have all night. in Patagonia, we are responsible to you. We want to hear from you. We've got the telephone lines open now, and of course the subject we're discussing today is prisoners and how they fit back into the community once they've been moved. Yes. Uh, a lot of discussion has been held lately about whether people should actually go to prison for some of the minor misdemeanors. It's not healthy. Or whether they should be put back into the community under supervision. We want to hear from you. Now, you've listened to our experts talk this morning. You've heard both sides of the story.
My father says you're not from around here. No, I'm from Ireland. It's pretty far away. Oh, it's far away, all right. And you came on the motorcycle? What's your name? Estella Gentile. Fergus O'Connell. I've come from the United States, New Jersey. Have you heard of it? My mom wants to know if you're going to eat at the house. No, thanks anyway. I have to get on with my work. I haven't much time. You shouldn't be eating that. Bad stuff. Cause you a lot of trouble in the future. Wait there. Look what I've got for you. How many brothers and sisters does he have? Seven. Which color do you like? Just any. You must have a favorite color. Yellow. Yellow. There's six for the children, two for the parents, And a yellow one for you. Tell me, are there any fish in the river? Sometimes. Mr. Fergus! Mr. Fergus! My mom says we already have toothbrushes. But they're free! You don't have to pay for them. I'm not a toothbrush salesman. What do you do? I'm a dentist. A dentist? You are on holiday. No, I'm not on holiday. I'm working. Where? Everywhere, here, there. Wherever! That's El Salvador. Horrible place. Children, grown-ups, everyone has cavities and pyrrhea. It's really terrible. That's an Indian chief in Ecuador. Is this your mother? No, that's Mrs. Cleo Dubois, chairwoman of the DFDDC, the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness, who I work for. She's a very rich lady and a very good person, too. That's Susan, my wife. How old are you? I'm 18. Why? What are your plans for the future? Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, in Rio Garciegos. Oh, I shall be there in two or three months. I'll send him your love. Tell him I got married. Pardon? Oh, forget what? it! You really went for it. Pardon? You really put that thing back together again in a hurry. Well, I have to be back on the road again by tomorrow. 
Look, mister, I won't be here tomorrow because I have to get the meat for the wedding. What do you say we settle up right now? No problem. I need an invoice. That I don't have. Sorry. Oh, never mind. If you, if you put your signature down there, it ought to be enough. The Foundation insists on a complete record of my expenses. Everything accounted for, you know? Of course. Well, mister, if you want to stay for the wedding, you're welcome. Thanks, anyway. You're very kind, but I've lost three days as it is. Well, thanks for the toothbrushes. Don't forget to use them. Fill her up, please. You are already leaving. Tomorrow. Right now, I have to do a test run. Do you want to come? Let's go. <laughs> So to hell with the customers, eh? Hold tight! Bed early. I'm leaving tomorrow at dawn. After all, men are not plants. They have to keep moving. Always moving. Do you like them? Yes. Keep them. They're for you. It's my wedding present. Thank you.
Get out of there. Get out. Get off my motorcycle! What in the name of Jesus do you think you're doing? You're supposed to be getting married. You must be out of your mind. You're going home right now. Do you oh, realize what? Go you... away and leave me alone. What go does this away. mean? Leave what me. are you doing? I hate you. I'm a dentist. Go All right, get in. I'm taking you back home. I am going to Rio Gargiegos. You can do as you please. Somebody will take me. Sure. Cold mineral water, please. Gentlemen, please, I know this girl. I know her parents. Do you know this guy? He says he's a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> You stay with us, Chiquita. You'll be okay. Listen, fellas, would you just leave the girl alone? <laughs> you got real pretty hair. Look, man, just stay out of this. And we won't make any fuss about it. Okay? What do you say, dentist? <laughs> <laughs> She's not what you think. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you smell like a fairy. That was unnecessary. Hey, let's take her and go. Leave the girl alone! Hey, hi, boss. What's going on here? We were doing fine with this chick until this screwball showed up. You shut up. Who are you? My name's Fergus O'Connell. He's a dentist. <laughs> a dentist? A real dentist? You went to dental school? Of course I went to dental school. I'm a member of the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness. Is that your motorcycle? I'm a traveling dentist. Okay, let's go. Say, boss, what say the girl comes with? No, we take off and the girl stays here. Ah, oh, come on. Nobody asked you to do anything. How much do I owe you? Doctor, will you take a, a look, please? I'm coming to the light. Open your mouth wide. You had two molars extracted a week, ten days ago, yeah? Uh-huh. It was healing all right, but they didn't do a very good job of it. Uh -huh. 
You have an impacted wisdom tooth there. Hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. My advice is to take it out. Why not? What good is a wisdom tooth? That's a common misconception. Could be used to replace one of your missing molars. And what's the damage? How much do I owe you? Okay, do it. Well, a transplant. Here. Why not? It's a complicated operation. I don't have the essentials here. Are you chickening out? Or what? This just isn't the place for such a complex undertaking. What do you need? Plenty of light, boiling water, clean towels, basic sterile conditions. Okay. You heard him? You, pull down the shades and put up the shutters. Get some hot water, towels. Okay, boss. Estella, wash your hands. Open. What's that? It's anesthetic. Nobody's knocking me out. It's only local anesthetic. No anesthetic. Well, that's ridiculous. You won't be able to stand the pain. No anesthetic. All right. I hope the sight of blood doesn't make you squeamish. I'm going to need your full cooperation. Hold him. Tight. No talking, no chewing, liquid foods only, and he's to rest for at least 48 hours. He should take these antibiotics every six hours. All right? Just a moment, please. Could you open your mouth? It's just for my records. Hey, no pictures. Can't you see we are crooks? No, thanks. There's absolutely no charge for the Eversmile company. Thanks very much. Don't forget to take your antibiotics. He's a brave man. And you are brave, too. You can be my assistant till we get to Rio Gallegos.
There's room for two of us in here. But I'm a dentist. What are you doing? I'm training. A nail, a tooth. Let me give you an example. Supposing there are heavy rains and the river is overflowing and all of a sudden the dentist's bag is swept away by the current. On the other bank, is a woodsman in an isolated cabin. His face is swollen. He's suffering. Tell me, is a dentist without his instruments helpless in this situation? Does he give up? Absolutely not. The traveling dentist extracts the tooth barehanded and the woodsman smiles. This is a very old technique. And in the 17th century, the great Charles always worked with his hands. Why don't you try? Go on, don't be afraid. Go on. It's very difficult. Look, I'll teach you. <laughs> A premolar. <laughs> <laughs> Eversmile of New Jersey, sole manufacturers of lovely teeth toothbrushes, brings you the voice of the DFDDC, the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness. Beware, your teeth are in danger. Your health is in danger. Cavities, pyorrhea, Vincent's gingivitis are lying in ambush. Don't give them a chance. Your traveling dentist is waiting for you. Brother, surrender with confidence and listen to his advice. You need no money, just the decision to fight. So just brush your teeth and come down. Eversmile of New Jersey, sole manufacturers of lovely teeth toothbrushes, brings you the voice of the DFDDC, the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness. Beware, your teeth are in danger. Your health is in Mrs. danger. Mrs. Mrs. Cavities, wait! Pyorrhea, wait, Vincent's please! Wait! Wait! Are lying in ambush. Don't give them a chance. Your traveling dentist is waiting for you. Brother, surrender with confidence and listen to his advice. You need no! 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 no. Doctor Fergus, look. We have a patient. Girl says you don't charge. That's right, everything I do is free. Then take a look at this brat. He's got a loose tooth that's about to fall out and he won't let anyone near it. If your tooth wants to fall out, young fella, you must let it fall. Hallelujah. <laughs> you didn't even notice. Doctor, we have our next patient. Come along, my friend. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, the Eversmile Company, there's absolutely no charge. And if you feel any pain, you can punch me on the nose. Come along. Make yourself comfortable. Don't be frightened. You don't need a dentist, Pancho. You need a vet. <laughs> Watch out, Doc, he bites. <laughs> you watch his breath, Doc. Open he wide. Kill you. He killed his wife. Called <laughs> <laughs> him. Say, Pancho. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, Pancho. Can we get the coffin ready? Just a little tartar. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's where you were hiding. There is a cavity. You're going to get rid of it. If you'd like to rinse your mouth out. Stella.
If you'll excuse me. I'll be back in a moment. Hey, Pancho, spit your tooth out. Then he won't need to operate. <laughs> Operator, hello. Hello. Use that phone. Hello. 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 Operator. Hello. Operator. Operator. Make a run for it, man. This is your chance. He's a butcher. <laughs> the doctor is an eminent scientist. For your information, he's talking with North America right now. Ha! Talking with North America. You can't speak to North America from here. <laughs> he put in the call. He can do things no one else can. He has fixed the teeth of the cannibals. Yesterday, he extracted a tooth of a man and put it elsewhere in his mouth. He operated for three hours, and he did it without anesthetic. <clears throat> So, now you don't have nothing to say, right? He can pull your teeth with his fingers, if he feels like it. The operator says there's an answering machine replying. That's impossible. There must be people at the Foundation at this hour. Shall I cancel the call? No, I want to leave a message. This is, this is Dr. Fergus O'Connell. I didn't receive any toothbrushes in Fiedma, Rio Negro. My stock is running out. Please send urgently to Coletta Olivia. That's Charles, Atlas, Lydia, Estragon. Oh, shit. What happened? Where the hell is everybody? I don't know. I guess they were scared. Don't run away! Cavities have no mercy on cowards! I won't charge you people! I only come to help you! A smile of New Jersey. Soul manufacturers of lovely teeth toothbrushes brings you the voice of the DFDDC. Foundation for the development of dental consciousness. Beware, your teeth are in danger. Your health. help you? I'd like to see the manager, please. I represent the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness. We provide free services to every member of the company, managers, employees. We make no distinction. The manager is in a meeting. I'll find out if he can see you. Have you got a card? Uh, yes, I, I think this should be better than a business card. Just a moment, please. This way, please. <laughs> Fergus O'Connor. Very interesting. Ah, a battle. A very important battle. Tooth decay is the most widely disseminated disease on the planet. And while prevention is simple, treatment is difficult, you know. This is the message we must oh. bring to the people. Of course. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Lopez, what are you doing? Come here. Come out, Lopez. Uh, Dr. Uh... Fergus O'Connell. Oh, yes. Look, what do you think, Lopez? Impressive, isn't it? Mm. Do Hiveros Indians also have cavities? There are cavities along the Amazon and cavities along the East River. Cavities have no homeland. Oh, serious problem. Very serious problem. 
Very serious. There is so little awareness and there are no leaders. Last year in Singapore alone, $220 million were lost on account of dental problems. In the meantime, companies take no steps whatsoever. I mean, quite apart from anything else, this is not good business policy. No, of course not. Well, you're a company manager. Do you require that your employees have sound teeth? I'm afraid not. You have a dental problem, don't you, Lopez? Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose any time, so... Uh... Can you examine him right here? Here? Here. Uh, hmm. Well, I can take a look. Open your mouth, Lopez. Uh, Open your mouth, Lopez. Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke, eh, Doctor? What did you do, Doctor? Did you pull out all my teeth? So your dentures hurt. Strange, very strange. It was only a joke. It's a not joke? Serious. Yeah, no, it's a very serious matter. Uh, no. We have to find out what caused the pain. Uh, uh, no, no, no. He's taken my teeth. He's taken my teeth. I know why your teeth my hurt, teeth. Mr. Lopez. Miss, miss, I think you should come. Your friend. Oh. 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 They were my mother's. No more pain, Mr. Oh. Lopez. this temptation. You did a bad thing, Fergus. You lost your head. You behaved like a hooligan, not like a dentist. Violence is not the way to go. It's a sign of weakness. Ignorance is not the enemy. Tooth decay is the enemy. The people are innocent, they don't understand. The bunch of son of bitch. No. The ignorant are blameless. It was my fault for losing my temper. I must beg Lopez for forgiveness. Don't go, don't go! They will kill you! Lopez! Lopez! Yes, this is Fergus O'Connell. I'm trying once more. I'm fed up of talking with an answering machine. The situation is critical. I'm running out of toothbrushes and there is no more money. Please, it is essential that you send everything to Puerto de Ziedo. Repeat, Puerto de Ziedo. Peter Ustinov, Esther, Roger, Tom, Oscar. Separate word. Doris, Esther, Stephen, Esther, Anna, Dar... Pig. Hey, 
Hey, Doctor! You did a wonderful job! <laughs> great! Great! Mr. Fergus, what are you writing in your notebook? Don't call me Mr. And this isn't a notebook. Logbook. Okay, but what are you writing? Thoughts, ideas, problems. A few doubts. You miss your wife, don't you? Dentists are human, too. Of course I miss her. Susan misses me. It's life. She looks pretty in the picture. Pretty, ugly, what's the difference? Why do we always dwell on false issues? Look at the north of Ireland. Catholics, Protestants, a lot of nonsense. Bacteria will attack the teeth of cardinals and ministers alike. What a paradox. Rodents grow teeth all their life. The elephant, the elephant has four complete sets of teeth. And man, is he less evolved than a rodent or an elephant? Did we somehow mislay our genetic memory? Or did God just forget to give us better teeth? Doctor, I, I'm sorry to trouble you, but our child... Don't worry, my friend. You did the right thing. Come on, let's have a look, little fella. Open up. There are cavities. Cavities. Come on, we have work to do, Estella. Come. What is the name of that song? Russian Dove. Russian Doves. Very nice. Now, dear listeners, I'm going to reveal the surprise behind the song. In spite of the quality of the performance, it's not a recording, and the flute player is not a professional musician. It's our guest, Dr. Fergus O'Connell, our eminent North American dentist. Irish. Irish. Oh, very interesting. Thank you very much, Dr. O'Connell, for visiting our studio. Mm, good morning, Patagonia. What brings you to Patagonia, Doctor? I'm a traveling dentist. My mission is to develop dental consciousness in the Americas. I want to tell our listeners that the doctor here travels on a motorcycle. Are there many dentists doing what you do? I'm sorry, what was the question? Are there many dentists doing what you do? Unfortunately not, which is a shame. There isn't nearly enough consciousness about dental health. Ah, there aren't enough dentists. No, no, that's mm. not the problem. There are plenty of dentists, but they just sit around. Could you explain this notion? 
Of course. Do cavities sit around? No. <laughs> cavities don't sit around. They're on the move. And the office-bound dentist just sits there waiting for bacteria to show up. He doesn't go out to meet them. And how do you think this problem could be solved? With science and courage. Pioneer dentists must use all the resources available to them. <laughs> Fast communications and an aggressive disposition. There can be no pity for bacteria and their accomplices. Now, this is the kind of radio station we want. This is the radio station of pluralism. The radio station where the community can speak out. We have on the line Dr. Ulysses Calvo, a well-known dentist hereabouts. I'm listening, Dr. Doctor? Hmm? Yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. What's he saying? Dr. Kelvo disagrees with some of our guests' opinions. Pluralism. Pluralism! You can speak now, Doctor. What did he say? This is what radio is all about, serving the community. Traveling dentists are certainly not quacks. What about the great Thomas Carmeline? We hide nothing. The words of the speakers. A quack? Dubois de Chamont, a quack? He invented porcelain teeth in 1792. When? Tomorrow? With pleasure. Fantastic. <laughs> Good morning, Patagonia. I think it's a great idea, Doctor. Great. And so, my friends, the dentist, like the sun, firmly rooted in the center of the system, naturally emits his rays of detection, diagnosis, and therapy. The traveling dentist we take this opportunity to extend our thanks to the However, Social Club for their sponsorship the of this international is debate. Sustained. is more seductive than the realities of the workaday world. And I have nothing against traveling dentists. Cavities are the common enemy. We, we won't argue about that, no. <laughs> but whose teeth are these anyway? The fixed dentist has no doubts in this regard. They belong to the patient. They are his unquestionable property. And nobody, nobody can decide a fate. Lord Master of his teeth, he can decide when, how, and where he's going to have his teeth treated. Otherwise, we disregard freedom in favor of health, which would be a dishonorable situation. Thank you very much. The profound concepts expressed in Dr. Calvo's closing remarks. And now, Dr. Fergus O'Connell from the DFDDC is coming to the podium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Calvo's words are very lovely. Very lovely. The fixed dentist waits for the patient to come to him. And when does the patient come? When he's in pain. And when there's pain, the patient can't bear it. And he pays. So this is what I think. The fixed dentist certainly is in favor of freedom. The freedom to pay. What has the fixed dentist done here tonight? He has eaten, he has drunk, but he certainly hasn't mentioned that eating and drinking encourage the growth of bacteria. What has the traveling dentist done instead? He has looked the situation squarely in the face. At this very moment, ladies and gentlemen, Bacteria are working in your mouths, eating away, building colonies, digging in. They're causing cavities, pyorrhea, gingivitis, abscesses. The traveling dentist says, beware. This food is shit. What? What? No, no. What's 
going on? Fergus, what's going on? All I want to know is, am I a prisoner or not? No. In that case, will you please return my papers, because I have to leave. I have to send these to the capital to be checked. But I need that certificate to work. Listen, you say you are a dentist and I believe you, but we must check to see that your papers are in order. Of course my papers are in order! It's not necessary to shout. Please. This is a frame-up. Look. Take your album. Do a little sightseeing. In a few days, come back to me and we'll sort everything out. Okay? Good night! Bastards. Cowardly bastards. You bastards! You cowardly bastards! Bastards! Oh, shut up and go bastards! What is this 6,000 year old jaw telling us? Is it telling us that the Lord wants tooth decay for mankind? No. Is it telling us to have mercy on bacteria? Absolutely not. So what is it telling us? This ancient jaw is telling us beware. That's what it's telling us, this ancient jaw. That's what it's telling us, ladies and gentlemen. And why can't we listen to it? Why can't we listen to it? It's telling us loud and clear. You, madam, how is it that you have to wear dentures? Tell me. And you, sir, with your mouth full of candy. Dr. O'Connor, come with me. It's all right, sir, sir, I'll be back. Come, please. Uh, <clears throat> Look, O'Connor, these people, all these people, they've been my patients. They have trusted me for many, many years. In my opinion, they have misplaced their trust. It's nothing personal. It's the system that I despise. Who cares about the system? I care about my work. Look, it took me 20 years. 20 years of research and research. O'Connor, I've given up 20 years of my life developing my sun theory. It's my life's work. Look, I'm, I'm going to ask you something. G get away from here. Leave this place. Leave us alone. Take your motorcycle and... Look, if you need some money, I... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. Look, we, we are both professional dentists. We understand each other. O'Connor! Push everything away, Estella. We're leaving. Dr. O'Connell. Dr. O'Connell. Do you know me? News travels faster than men. Dr. O'Connell, we are resorting to your science. Brother Felix is in pain, and he's very old. It's bad timing, brother. I've been hamstrung. There's nothing I can do around here. I'm sorry. Why not? They have my papers. It's very dangerous for you too, Estella. And without papers, you are no longer a dentist? That's not the point. What's the point then? That somebody should suffer? You are a dentist.
We have arranged for Mrs. O'Connor to stay in the annex. Brother Felix, Dr. O'Connor has made a long trip to see you from Ireland. Brother Felix says that he's grateful for the concern of his brother and that he will gladly speak with the doctor. The doctor didn't come here to speak. He came to treat you. Uh, brother Felix says that only the Lord provides relief and consolation. But hasn't the Lord provided for my presence here? Brother Felix smiles. Why? The Lord made tooth decay, but he also made dentists like me. The doctor forgets free will. And Brother Felix forgets that God made man in his own image, and the Lord doesn't approve of suicide. Brother Felix says he cannot be accused of suicide. But he joyfully accepts the claim for a challenge that carried his bows because he did not bring the affliction upon himself. Huh. Is he sure he hasn't sinned against his body? He hasn't eaten sweets? He hasn't chewed gum? Has he brushed his teeth after every meal? He says that excessive attention to one's body is also a sin. Brother, please. Dr. O'Connell has come here to fulfill the sacred duty of assisting his neighbor. He says that as far as the Lord is concerned, the doctor has already fulfilled his duty. Of course I haven't. I swore the Hippocratic Oath. Brother Felix says that Hippocrates was mortal and that the Lord is eternal. <laughs> You are not going to tell me what happened. Maybe I should give up all of these things. Go home. Open an office and become a pig. <sighs> They'll all be wanting cavities now. You must eat, Doctor. You will need your strength. Get everything ready and wait in the motorcycle. What's going on? Just do as I say, damn it. Is something happening, Brother Conrad? I've come to replace you, Brother. You must be tired. I thank you, Brother. But it won't be necessary. I feel quite well. <laughs> Put Brother Felix to sleep. <laughs> I 
I hope we're not too late. You're the dentist, aren't you? How do you know? I'm the foreman of the Los Cisnes Ranch. The Signora would like you to come to see her workers. Girl can eat in the kitchen. Estella is not the girl. She's my assistant. Where I eat, she eats. Estella, sit down. As you wish, Doctor. Poor Estella. We haven't been eating very well lately, have we? Go easy there, Estella. That stuff is shit. And who are you? Uh, she's my assistant. Oh, how stupid of me. You were sleeping like an angel. Fergus O'Connell. From the Dubois Foundation for the Development of Dental Consciousness. You know me. And I admire you. Your views are fascinating. You have no idea how much I enjoyed seeing you make Ulysses Calvo shut his mouth. He's a terrible dentist. But my late husband trusted him, poor thing. They used to go hunting together. I know that Ulysses had your papers taken away from you. But don't worry. We'll take care of all that. <laughs> the great Thomas was also persecuted due to jealousy. You know of the great Thomas? What can I offer you? Perhaps a little scotch? Uh, yeah, scotch will be fine. But tell me, what do you know of the great Thomas? Azelius, Nathaniel Hymoro. Hans Suleiman of Rotterdam, all great dentists unjustly forgotten. Now, you must tell me everything about your experiences. Well, I have an album of experiences that you might be interested to see. Estella, could you show it to our hostess? Yes. Doctor. Slancha. To us. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Tomorrow will be a hard day. Sleep well. Estella. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I never imagined that one day I would actually meet a real traveling dentist. I'm sorry. 
Here am I prattling on, and you must be so tired. No, really. It's a pleasure to listen to you. Really? Of course. At least, let me take off your boots. No, thank you. It's not necessary. Why? I promise I'll be very gentle with you. My young love said to me, My mother won't mind, And my father won't slight you For your lack of kind. She sat away from me, and this she did say, It will not be long, love, Till our wedding day. She stepped away from me, And she moved through the fair, And fondly I watched her, Move here and move there And then she went homeward With one star awake As the swan in the evening Moves over the lake You're not going to tell me what it says. You were very nice to me, but I don't want to be in your way any longer. You have every right to change your mind, but I would like to tell you that all the things you taught me were lies, and I believed them like an idiot.
for long distance calls, you have to go to the gas station. Where did you say you were from? Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. You write it. If you want some company. Pardon? Hey, come over here. My name is Rita. Peter Bentham, Canada. He comes from Canada, you know? Take him to number four. No, which way is the gas station? I have to make a phone call. That way. Thanks. Go ahead. Rita will wait for you. Is this Fergus O'Connell's house or not? Never mind who I am. Who the hell are you? What's going on? Let me talk to Susan. I want... She's my wife! I know I haven't called in five months. Do you think it's easy to call from Patagonia? Getting through to the Foundation is almost impossible. And when I... What? What the hell are you talking about? What pandas? What do panda bears have to do with it? Listen, my situation... What? Listen, can I talk to Susan, please? All right. Well, tell her that Fergus O'Connell wishes her Merry Christmas. No, there's no snow here. Merry Christmas to you, too. Estella. How are you, Doctor? Estella, I was a victim. That woman was a witch. Hmm. I'm staying in the motel. We can't talk here. Why? It's dangerous for both of us. You're not dangerous to anyone anymore. Dentist. Hey! What do I care? I get along fine with dentists. And now the cameras of today's world take us to Tokyo, where Dr. Hiroko Yamashita proudly shows off the latest advance in Japanese technology, a complete surgery on wheels. This powerful van has a luxurious interior with a comfortable office and the latest in surgical equipment, laser, ultrasound, and loads more of the most advanced devices used today. Dr. Yamashita describes the van as a veritable moving fortress, taking the battle against tooth decay to the field, and for the patients, a new and relaxed way of treatment. To judge by their faces, no one's afraid of this dentist. Dr. Yamashita could go on and on detailing the advantages of this technical marvel, but we've got to go. The beauty of Lapland awaits us. Good luck, Dr. Yamashita, and sayonara. In Lapland, the traditional reindeer has all but disappeared. The new passion of the Laplanders is motor ski racing. Along the hall. Hmm. 
What have you done to yourself? Merry Christmas. You're drunk. You're drunk. Look at you! Yeah, look at me. I can't work. I lost my wife. You lost your wife? The Dubois Foundation for the Development of Panda Bears. Madame Dubois has fallen in love with a panda. She never really cared about tooth decay. Estella. Come. If you've seen, I've shown you. Oh. I try prevention. Stand up. Oh. I try persuasion. Oh. I confronted the big dentist in their air conditioned office. Oh. No one oh. listened. Come on. <sighs> the Japanese are coming. Uh, now listen. The Japanese are coming! Then you'll see when the Japanese come! Oh God. Totally oh God. drunk. The Japanese are coming. Oh God. Oh, totally drunk. Oh, God. The Japanese are coming. Very drunk. Merry Christmas, Estella. Forgive me, Estella. The world is collapsing outside. And I have an erection. Bacteria will be finally defeated! <laughs> 